What is going on, everybody? It is Friday, March the 4th, and that means it's time for my News Radar. Let's start off this News Radar with some crazy hardware that has finally been shown off in the flesh at Mobile World Congress 22 here by TCL. We've seen them in the past, TCL, show off some concepts, right? Some, some dummy hardware, some patents, but now we've actually seen some really wild stuff shown off, somewhat working, and apparently these things, they do have working, ver fully working versions of them that they're not showing off quite yet. But this is some really interesting stuff that they finally shown off. Let's look at this tweet here by Brad Molan. And this is what they're calling the 360 Ultra Flex concept. And the wild thing about this folding phone concept is that it can fold either direction, which is absolutely awesome. So you've got it in this orientation. And then of course they can be folded all the way back around flat. So then that in that way, you basically have a Huawei Mate X where you have instead of a Z fold that folds in and then there's a cover display, you fold the other way around so that that interior screen is now on the outside as well in sort of a phone mode type setup. But then you can also fold all the way around the other direction so that you kind of have a surface duo like situation where the screen is now fully protected either direction is fully available to you this is really really hard to pull off now what i've seen is that the dummy builds that they've been showing are not quite dummy builds they do function but you're really limited in what you're allowed to do with these things now they're claiming that they have one that works correctly but they're not showing it off yet this is a really interesting concept then you've also got something i've talked about on this channel the tcl fold and roll and what this thing is, as we show this video here of it, you can see it expanding here, it rolls out, but it also has a hinge to fold on. So there's two things going on. So it rolls out and it also folds. You can see as it expands, there's a black portion of the screen there, and then it realizes what's happened and expands it. And then down here, he does show it going the opposite direction and receding, and then of course, rejiggering the interface to fit that but like i said it also does fold over and you can see here on android central where it is partially folded over and then there's the rolling section so the idea there would be that you've got a really small footprint when it's folded over but then you can open it and then if you can want and then if you want an even bigger screen, you can extend it. Now you have a really massive screen that just came straight out of your pocket. 8.8 .8 inch total display that you can again fit directly into your pocket. And then of course you do have an edge display on there because that rolling portion, the screen literally rolls around into the body of the phone leaving a bit of it exposed on the side. All in all, it looks like TCL is making some real progress towards bringing these things to the market. Really fascinating stuff to see. Samsung appears to have now found themselves in a similar position as OnePlus from a few months back because they have been found out to be throttling the performance on some 10,000 Android apps. Let's look at this article here from 9 to 5 Google. Apparently, they're citing a Twitter user who has discovered the Samsung's game optimizing service app is actually optimizing the performance of thousands of non-gaming apps. When an app is in the game optimizing service list, its performance is limited as demonstrated by a YouTuber who I will link this whole article. If you want to watch this person's video, do check it out because it is pretty much evidence directly that this is what's happening basically they changed the package name of 3d mark to trick it into thinking it was another app and the performance on that benchmark dropped precipitously the list of apps that are being throttled include things like netflix instagram tiktok even some google apps even some samsung apps like pay secure folder and others are being throttled and now this has angered people so much that samsung has now released a statement which i'm just going to quickly paraphrase here hey we're aware that people are mad about this we're going to release an update that will allow you to customize the list of apps that are going to be optimized it's also important to note here that max weinbach has also claimed on twitter that the performance mode on some of these Samsung devices disables most of these optimizations. So all that's well and good. We got the foundation bill here. Samsung is throttling certain apps to save on battery effectively. Now we need to talk about why this literally does not matter at all and people are freaking out 
over absolutely nothing. Our phones are so preposterously powerful that even if you restricted the processing power to half or maybe three quarters, you are not going to notice when it comes to launching Instagram, launching Netflix, loading up YouTube. You're not going to notice because we're talking about on simple apps like this. These are not games. You don't need the full system to just fire up full blast to open up TikTok. You don't. We're talking about a difference of milliseconds in terms of loading speeds on these apps, and you are not going to perceive these differences. You're just not. And I know someone out there is going to say, well, actually, if you disable the optimization that Samsung is doing on Netflix, it loads up one full second faster. There might be some app out there where it loads noticeably faster. But you have to ask yourself this. Is the trade-off worth it? You're going to lose battery life when you disable what Samsung is doing here. They're doing it for a reason because in their calculations, they've determined that the slowdown is imperceivable almost all the time, or if it is perceivable, it's such a small amount that no one is going to really care. Not really. People care that their phones are being slowed down without their choice. That's what they care about. But the actual day-to-day -day impact of this, I'm sorry, nobody really cares about this. And nobody would have even known this was happening had this not been posted online. It, no one would have noticed. But what they will notice is that the battery life is going to be improved by this ever so slightly. I'm not saying it's going to be a radical amount, but it's going to help the battery life. Some and people are, some people I've seen, are complaining about the battery life on the S22, in particular, the ones with the smaller batteries. So which way do you want it? Do you want the better battery life, or do you want apps that are imperceivably faster than they were before? This is a controversy, a news story about nothing. Sure, Samsung, give us the option to disable a whole cloth or to customize the apps. That's probably a better solution. What should have happened from the beginning, because if there is a nugget of news story in here, it's the lack of choice, right? They should have given us the ability from the beginning, if they're going to do this, to, you know, look, by default, we're going to optimize everything that isn't a game. But you can go in and, and tick boxes if you don't want that to be the case for whatever reason. Give us the choice. Sure, it's Android. That's the point of Android. Give us the choice. But otherwise, I'm telling you, had this person I figured this out. Nobody would have known any different. So let's close things off today with another sort of hidden feature that was delivered to Surface Duo with this last update. I'm talking about the original Surface Duo. If you recall, I talked about the fact that a very specific and beneficial behavior has been doing all kinds of weird stuff on the original Duo and then Surface Duo 2. Well, that behavior is now fixed once again on the original Surface Duo. Here's what I'm talking about. On the original Surface Duo, if you had an app open on one screen and you clicked on a link in that app to open either the web browser or another app and your other screen was open, there's nothing on it, it would open the new app on that open screen so that the first app is not occluded. That is the intelligent behavior. That's the way it should work. When Duo 2 launched, that behavior, excuse me, was not there. Well, what happened is the app would open wherever it was opened last. So let's say you've got Twitter here on my right hand, which is left from your perspective, and I open up a web browser link, but the last place my web browser was open was also on that screen. It would just open up on top of Twitter, leaving a blank open screen on the left. That is a dumb behavior. That's not how that should work. Well, they recently fixed that on, on Duo 2, but at the same time as they fixed it on Duo 2, it just got an amber alert. That's very sad. Anyways, the same time they fixed that on Duo 2, they broke it on Duo 1. They gave Duo 1 the bad behavior. Well, now, thanks to this tweet from Tom Stone, <laughs> I am now aware that apparently they have refixed it on the original duo so let's go to the overhead camera here let's see if we can replicate this and see if he is correct that this behavior is fixed let's open up twitter and let's open up my web browser because i want to put the web browser on top of twitter and then close it so that the last place it was opened was here so that it's not a coincidence if it opens up over there so let's go to news my news feed and let's click on a link to Android headlines and see if it opens on the left screen. It did. They have indeed, once again, fixed this behavior. This is one of those small things that I think no one really often notices. It's one of those things that 
I kind of only noticed it when it was when it wasn't there. When I was on my Duo 2 and apps kept opening on top of the other screen. So then what you'd have to do is open on top of Twitter or whatever, and you'd have to drag the app back over to that open screen. So it added that extra step to maintain your multitasking. And while it was never a deal breaker, it was super duper annoying. So thanks to Tom Stone here, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Tombstone will be T-H-O, it's spelled T-O-H. We're gonna go Tom Stone. Thanks for pointing that out. I believe someone else might have also pointed this out to me, but I cannot find their comment. I think it was on YouTube, but I can't seem to find it. So sorry, I tried, I forgot. So guys, thanks for making it to the end of today's news radar. If you did make it all the way to the end, you did a couple of things. One, you helped the algorithm a ton. And second, you proved that you liked this video. So why don't you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss the next one. And I'll see you on that next video. And until then, stay nerdy, my friends.